Welcome to my How to Make a Shop tutorial. In this series, we'll cover the basics of making a shop in Roblox Studio, including a custom in-game currency system, an items page to buy tools that go into the player's backpack, a Roblox item shop for temporary Robux purchases using developer products, and a Game Pass page for buying the Game Passes that the game offers. In this episode, we'll design and create the UI for the shop. You may also notice I already have some stuff in this baseplate, and that's because I decided to use the inventory I made in my inventory tutorial series to show that the shop and inventory are completely compatible without any additional code needed. If you have your own inventory already or just want to use the default Roblox backpack, it will work the exact same way as the inventory just tracks tools being put into the player's backpack. Details aside, I hope you enjoy this first episode of the shop tutorial series. First. We'll create a basic R15 rig that we'll use as a sort of NPC to open the shop when we approach them. We'll set the code up later so that we can set any part as a shop part and that will open the shop UI when players walk up to it, but we'll also add a shop button as well to open the shop from anywhere even if you're not near any of the physical locations in game. We'll name this rig shop dummy and leave it as is for now and we'll configure it later. We're going to create a new screen GUI inside starter GUI and name it shop. We'll insert a frame into it and name it background, which will then center and scale to fill up a good portion of the screen. We'll adjust the color to give it a darker fill and then insert a UI corner object to round the corners and adjust it until we like it. We'll insert a text label into the background frame and name it title, changing the font and setting the text to shop, positioning it at the top middle of our background frame. Inside the background frame again, we'll add a text button and name it close, adding a UI aspect ratio constraint inside of it to make sure it's always a square. We'll change the color to red, the anchor point to 0 0.5, and the scale to whatever value you want using scale rather than offset so it scales based on the player's screen size. We'll set the text to X to represent a simple close button. We'll then add a UI corner to this as well to round it out. We'll add another frame inside of the background frame and name it Pages, centering it in the background frame and scaling it to be most of the size minus the outer edges. We'll then make this frame invisible as it will simply store the items in the shop by setting background transparency to 1. I then spend some time fidgeting with the other items in the UI so far so that the pages has more room. We'll add a UI page layout object inside the pages frame which will make our lives millions of times easier for making multiple shop pages for different kinds of shops. You can adjust how the UI page layout switches from one page to another by playing around with its properties, such as the easing style and the tween time, which both function essentially the same as they would in a regular tween. We'll add another frame inside the pages frame, which will be the first page of the shop. We'll name this frame items and set its size to be 1010, filling the entire pages frame. We'll then set this frame to be invisible as well by setting the background transparency to 1. Every frame inside the pages frame will essentially be set up as another page automatically thanks to the UI page layout, but before we create the other pages for game passes and Robux items, we'll configure their items frame some more. Now insert a text label into the items frame to label which shop this is for users so they know which one they have open. We'll set the text to be item shop and adjust it as we please. We're also going to delete the title text label inside the background frame just because it doesn't really look right having both the item shop and shop titles right on top of one another. We'll now insert a scrolling frame object inside the items page, centering it and scaling it to fit most of the page but leaving enough room that it doesn't overlap the page title. We'll set it to be a darker color as well to match the aesthetic. Now we'll use Ctrl plus D to clone the items page and rename it to Game Passes. We'll clone it again and rename it to Robux for developer products. Now notice that you can see the other pages to the right of our items page, so we'll need to turn on the Clips Descendants property for the pages frame to make sure only the current page is visible and nothing outside the bounds of the pages frame can be seen. Now if you take a look at the UI page layout's properties, you'll notice one boolean property called scroll wheel enabled, which basically lets you switch the pages automatically by using the scroll wheel. The other boolean properties are essentially the same thing but for devices other than PC. You can leave those on if you'd like, but it's usually more intuitive for players if there's a button to press as well, so we'll leave those on just while we create the UI, but we'll turn them back off later on as, with how I plan to set up this shop, it might be unintuitive for users to have the scrolling enabled. Note that you'll need your mouse to not be inside the scrolling frame when you scroll in order for it to switch pages, as otherwise it'll scroll in the scrolling frame instead of the UI page layout. We'll change the UI page layout fill direction property to be vertical and then adjust the title text labels in the Robux and Game Passes page to match their respective pages in both name and color. We'll set the Robux shop title to be green and the Game Pass title to be blue. We'll insert another frame inside the background frame and name it Buttons, scaling it to the left. This frame will store and organize the buttons that will move the player through each page. 
We'll set the buttons frame to be invisible and add a UI list layout, configuring it to stack items inside the buttons frame vertically and adjusting the alignment however you'd like. We'll insert a text button and name it Items Shop, setting the size to fill the entire buttons frame on the X axis but making it fairly short on the Y axis. We'll then adjust the text as we please and add a UI corner object around the corners as usual. We'll add a UI padding object inside the text button to give some room around the edges of the text. Now we'll use Ctrl D again to clone this button and rename it to Game Pass Shop, changing the color and text to match the Game Passes page we made earlier. We'll do this again with a Robux Shop button. Finally, we'll go to the UI list layout and adjust the padding to give some room between each of the buttons. At this point, I also made the executive decision to change the text of the Game Passes Shop to be just Game Passes so that the text scaled property doesn't make the Game Passes button smaller than the other two buttons. If you'd like to reorganize either the buttons or the pages, which I do, then use Ctrl plus X to copy and remove whichever item you want to appear last, and then paste it back in to put it at the end of the list. We'll do this to position the Game Passes button after the Robux Shop button, as well as position the Game Passes Shop page after the Robux Shop page to match the buttons. Now we'll head to the item scrolling frame inside the items page and insert an image button, which we'll rename to Sample. Then we'll insert a UI grid layout object inside the item scrolling frame as well to organize the shop items into a grid automatically. We'll set the image to be empty for now and play around with the color and appearance of the background of the image button. We'll then add a UI corner object around the edges and a text label to label what the name of the shop item is. We'll position this text at the top in the middle so it doesn't overlap where the image will go too much. We'll rename this text label to item name. If you want, you can also add a UI padding object inside the item name text label to give some room around the edges without having to scale the text label inward. We'll head back to the image property of the sample image button and set it to a random image of mine to see what it might look like once it has the item's image. Now we'll take this sample and the UI grid layout and copy and paste it to the other shop frames as well as they will use the same general layouts for shop items. We'll also then add another text label inside one of the sample image buttons and name it price, moving it to the bottom and setting it to a random text just to see how it looks. I add the letter C here to stand for coins because we'll create an in-game currency system later on. We'll remove the sample image buttons we copied to the other pages earlier and replace them with this new one we created so that they all have the prices label now. We'll then also go to the other samples in the Robux shop and the Game Pass shop and change their color and text to display Robux rather than coins. Create another frame inside the background frame and name it Info, inside which we'll put information for the currently selected shop item. We'll position it to the right and scale it until we're satisfied. Then we'll make it a darker color to fit the theme and add a UI corner object to round the corners. We'll then add a text label named Title and scale it to the top middle, changing the font to setting text scale to true and recoloring it. We'll copy this frame and name it Item Name, moving it down and adjusting the text appearance to show the current selected item's name setting the text to no item selected for now. We'll copy the item name text now and move it and scale it down and create a text for the item's description, setting its name to description and changing its text to good old lore ipsum just to see what it looks like. We'll then customize and change the text to make it look different from both the title and the item name. Now we'll scale the info frame to be a bit bigger and scoot the item name and description text labels up to make more room for a buy button. We'll add a text button and name it Buy, positioning it in the bottom middle of the info frame and configuring it to look like a Buy button, setting the background color to green and adjusting the text to whatever you like. Now we'll add yet another UI corner to round the corners again and add a UI padding to give some room between the text and the edge of the button. Now we'll make some more room between the description text and the Buy button so we can copy the description and scale it down to add a price text, renaming it to Price as shown. We'll change the text to be the same price as the buttons we made earlier, just to see that it looks good. Finally, we'll center the info frame vertically, just because it feels right. Then we'll disable those boolean properties in the UI page layout I mentioned earlier, as we're mostly done playing around with the UI for now. And that will be the end of this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and feel free to join the 9 Scripting Lessons Discord server on my YouTube channel account page if you have any questions regarding this video or any others. Additionally, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and feel free to comment on what kinds of videos you would like to see me make in the future, or if there's anything you'd like to see different in how I make videos. Lastly, if you're wanting more direct one-on-one -on -one help with anything related to studio development, or would like access to any of the studio files for any of my more recent tutorials, feel free to become a channel member for just $2.99 a month for the perks I mentioned and more. If not though, you can always still post questions in the comments or in my 9 scripting lessons discord server linked in the description and on my channel page, and I'll get to you when I can. Nonetheless, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.